there's a real common pattern in web design uh, to make these sort of card layouts of, you know, in this case, I'm using articles. They might be any number of things, but they're laid out in cards in rows and columns. As a designer, I've made these designs, and as a developer, I've received these designs. Often in the design, uh, the text might be all the same in every card, and it just lines up beautifully here, and it works great uh, no matter what size I'm at. But there's a problem when we actually start to put this into practice and people don't keep their article titles short. When we get real content in here, we can see that these cards start to size differently. And because of CSS grid, they're all flexing to be the same size, but they're not sure what to do with this space uh, inside uh, this short card. For example, the footer and the header Neither of them needs all that space. And we have to make a decision here. Do we want to um, have all the cards line up perfectly across the rows, across the columns, or uh, do we want um, each one to space itself in a more smart way? Both of those are things that we can do, and I'll show you how. I'm using a grid to do the basic layout, and then we're going to build on top of that. And part of what we're going to do uses subgrid I'm using Firefox Nightly here. At the time I'm recording this, uh, that's the browser where this works best. Subgrid is coming quickly, and you're going to want to check where it's supported when you're watching this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is try to align these lines across all the cards. So across the row, this first row and then the second row, I'm going to just get those borders to line up, and that's going to be my first solution here. So I'm going to do that by first defining on the body also uh, these two rows that we have. The first row is just that header, and then I'm going to repeat. This is interesting. So inside of the repeat function, you can put multiple values, and uh, it will repeat that pattern. Uh, and I've done it this way with the first auto outside and then repeat two of that, because this is what I want for each card. I want each card internally have this auto one fraction auto uh, that will make the header and footer collapse as small as they can uh, and give the main space as much uh, room as it wants to expand. The cards are laying out uh, just in those rows right now and really we want them to span those rows. So first I'm going to tell each card to span three rows uh, and it will be those three rows. Now, each card has auto, one fraction auto, but its internal contents don't know that yet. So I'm going to turn on subgrid here, uh, and you can see that that's all it takes to get this alignment across the cards now. What happens is, and I can pull open the inspector to show this, we have here the outer grid, and I can turn that on, and we see the outer grid lines. And then we also have subgrids. You can see this card is spanning three rows of the grid. And if I turn on the subgrid there, we can see that it inherits uh, the parent's definition of the grid. Uh, so now our content is falling into those same rows that the parent is falling into. And that's pretty cool. Uh, and not something that you could do with just CSS grid alone. I'll turn those off and come back to the code. Uh, if our browser doesn't support subgrid, we're going to want to fall back for that. What I've done here is copy in the same row description that I wanted for each card. So this auto one fraction auto, I just brought that down and I set it on the card itself. And you can see this gives us that same behavior, but without aligning across the rows. Uh, it's still a little nicer than all that extra space that we had without it, uh, where it was not quite clear how that space is being distributed. This just cleans it up a little bit in browsers that don't support subgrid, and then if browsers do support subgrid, we can override that uh, with the outer grid. Another interesting thing we can do here is uh, there's still some extra space in there, and that's coming from the row gap that's also being used from the parent grid. Uh, when you set subgrid, you also get the gutters from the parent. 
but you can override that. And I'm just going to override that and it cleans up the spacing a little bit. Um, but you can override that sort of in any direction. Uh, you can add more gutter, you can remove gutter. Subgrid works in place of grid template rows or grid template columns. So let's line up some of these columns as well. Let's line up this footer content so those buttons all take up the same space. Uh, we're again, we're going to create more columns uh, across the parent grid, the body grid there, and then we're going to have each card span more columns. This is right back to where we were. Uh, so once we've added those extra columns and then span those extra columns, we're right back to the same place we were to begin with. Um, so this will already work as our fallback. Uh, we don't need additional fallback for this. We're just going to turn on subgrid and everything will suddenly align. Uh, we have those columns already defined up top. Um, I'm using fit content. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail with fit content right now, um, but it's a very cool function that we can use in our grid definitions uh, to um, do some clever sizing. So I'm just repeating two times these two columns um, and then those are appearing uh, inside of each card. Um, so we have the outer grid and the inner grid and the fallback is the same as what we were able to do in browsers without subgrid. So this just works as this little enhancement that cleans up our style just a little bit. We can now do this alignment across elements that are also aligned and have it all be smart about the contents of those elements. So whether you're a designer or a developer, this is something you can start playing with. If you're a designer, request it from your developers. And it's just that little bit of extra cleanup for the browsers that support it.